So we got to deal with this. But I'm not president anymore. I don't get to, you know, just make speeches and everything. I'm supposed to figure out, is there one, some little old something we can do that might save a whole bunch of lives? And we cut a deal with these soft drink and, uh, and snack people. And I think it'll make a difference. Organizing markets. We're working on trying to help dramatically increase per capita income in two African countries, Rwanda and Malawi. First thing we did was buy sustainable fertilizer and in Rwanda, we bought three and a half times as much as ever been bought before. And we told the fertilizer company, A, we're buying more than you ever sold before. And B, you know that the Clinton Foundation is good for the money. I mean, you don't have to worry about getting paid. So cut the price. <laughs> and we said, and we wanted to price cut for the, all the transport. So the end of it was we wound up with a 30% reduction in fertilizer. And we then got a cut in the microcredit loan rates because we, we developed an underwriting system for the loans. And the farmers had a three to 400% increase in yields in the first year. And it's gonna have a dramatic impact allowing thousands and thousands of people to feed their children and feed the people in their village and have a decent standard of living by organizing markets. Now, we agreed to work with the biggest cities in the world on climate change and we're gonna go try to buy this LED lighting, which is super efficient for street lights and parking lots and, and other technologies that can be put on all public buildings in big cities, and we're gonna buy them in such big volumes with such certain payments, we're gonna get a better deal. But the point is, that's just something that I could do because of the life I had before I became an NGO because of what I wanted to do. But if, if you're a mentor to a kid who needs a helping hand. If you spend a week, an hour a week teaching, tutoring somebody, if you're in a big brother's big sister program, if you do any of this, it all counts and it all adds up. And so that's the last thing I wanna say. I, I, uh, I'm a little sad today because a friend of mine just died at 89, Arthur Schlesinger, the greatest, probably the greatest American historian in my lifetime. And Arthur Schlesinger was a little bitty guy, about so tall, you know, about that tall. And his wife was taller than me. They were an amazing couple, especially as he got older, he seemed to get shorter, you know. And he wore these little glasses and a big bow tie, but he had a mega brain and a very big spirit too, which is more important than having a big brain. And he wrote very lucid prose. And he was very important to me later. He, he became famous because he was close to President Kennedy and he basically had total access to the Kennedy White House while President Kennedy was in office. And he wrote a very famous book about the Kennedy presidency. But his other books and ones he wrote after that meant a lot to me because Schlesinger was always trying to get us to look past the headlines and the ephemeral things and look at the trend lines and the cycles of history to see the big truths that we have to hang on to. And he loved this country. He was a passionately patriotic person. And he believed in politics. He loved politics till the day he died. He harangued me about politics until the last time I saw him, just a couple weeks ago. But he also, if you read the histories of America, you will see that from the very beginning, we have been a place of citizen action. Alexis de Tocqueville said in 1835, when he came here, that he was stunned that Americans, when they had a problem, didn't wait for the government to solve it. They organized themselves and went about doing something, even if it was wrong. <laughs> so that's what I want to leave you with. You gotta be able to answer these five questions. You may not agree with me, but you need an answer. Otherwise, every time you pick up the paper or turn on the evening news or scroll up on the net what the news is, it's like the political equivalent of chaos theory and physics. All these different things happening. But if you can answer, what is the nature of the 21st century world? Is it good or bad? How would I like to change it? What's necessary to change it? Who's supposed to do it? If you can answer those questions, then it will help you deal with every single public challenge you read about or, or face. 
It will organize your thoughts and bring you to a position on an issue and enable you to root yourself not only as a private person but as a public person. And in an interdependent world, you must be both. Thank you very much.